Scotland, Six Nations for 2019. It's a pretty big squad. And the number of guys not in this squad is... It's astronomical. It is a, a long list of guys who are either unavailable or have been withdrawn from the squad. Uh, I guess we will see how much of an effect that has. I mean, there's still a lot of, of key talent in that Scotland side, but yeah, also some pretty key guys missing. So yeah, we'll have a look at the squad and uh, how the fixtures list is looking. What do the bookies say for the Scots? And um, yeah, a few key points. So that's the squad on the board. I'm not going to go through everybody. Uh, individually, but the guy is not on this board. I'll start with them. Uh, John Barclay is not, not available. Um, who else? Matt Ferguson, Richie Gray, uh, Alex Dunbar, Harley, and Matt Smith all withdrew recently. Blade Thompson, who was supposed to be making his kind of Scotland debut, he's not available. The list just goes on and on and on. The key guy, Hamish Watson is uh, unavailable so yeah it's been pretty poor luck for the scots i guess if nothing else this just continues uh gregor townsend's work in building depth because in some places you have to i'm looking at this team list and there are a number of guys with zeros in their um caps column international caps and a number of guys who have just the one cap or single digit caps anyway so yeah, it's a fairly uh, youthful in terms of caps looking squad. I think the number one cap guy is Laidlaw with 66. Uh, the number one cap forward looks to be Ryan Wilson with 41. So, oh no, so it's Johnny Gray with 47. But yeah, either way, none of them, none of the forwards are above 50 caps. So it's definitely, yeah, a squad that lacks a bit of experience. But hey, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you know, going into a World Cup year, this is the time to, to get some of these guys embedded and make sure they do have that experience, they're in that pressure environment and they're ready to go, uh, you know, come, come World Cup time, which is not that far away. But I mean, you still look at some of these guys, like McAnally is, is one of the best hookers in the world, so he's a key man to have there. Stewart, Kerr and Cherry, none of them have a cap between them. So uh, that's a bit concerning, but I did read something that he said he's kind of got full faith in, in all the guys, so uh, I suppose he has to say that, but uh, there's probably a bit of truth to it. Um, you know, seeing if these guys can make the step up now is, uh, is not a bad thing. Um, propping stocks look fairly well provisioned. I mean, you've obviously got Dell and Nell, Bergen, some kind of good names. Uh, who did I read that was out uh xander fagerson he's out but it looks like he's going to be back before the tournament's done likewise fraser brown so in terms of the hooking uh hooker stocks front row stocks overall uh they could improve as the comp goes on uh johnny gray in the second row still a bit of an injury cloud over him i'm not sure whether he's he's kind of good to go for round one but i guess we will wait and see on his fitness uh lucy's as i said no hamish watson but uh, you've still got, you know, Hardy, Richie, all these guys, uh, Crosby and Graham, Gary Graham will be potentially debuting if they get a run on, uh, and the backs, um, you look at scrum half and you say that's a position where, where they're pretty well stocked, like it's not gonna, it's not gonna be the end of the world if any of these guys go down, uh, Laidlaw, Price, Pergos, and George Horn, um, you know, all, all pretty solid players, so there's no reason to be worried there it's, it's very well provisioned uh same with fly half you got hastings and russell you're kind of comfortable with either of, either of those guys going into battle so that's fine um midfield i'm excited to see hugh jones play it's been a while since i've seen him uh kind of in scotland colors so that'll be good i think it was november he played was it one or two games yeah but um either way it's going to be a man to watch likewise peter horn always good value uh, in the centers, it's Sam Johnson who could potentially get a debut along with Chris Dean uh, and also Stafford McDowell. He looks like a big chap. So hopefully gets a run. Uh, there's talk about um, Townsend playing some of the less experienced guys in that opener against Italy. Uh, outside backs, Darcy Graham has been on fire for Edinburgh, so it's good to see him. Hopefully he gets some game time. 
But again, there's a fair bit of depth there. You've got Maitland, Seymour, and Hogg. All these guys, 30-plus caps. Hogg, Hogg's um, 60-plus. Blair Kinghorn. Um, so yeah, in some of those areas, there's definitely... Like depth basically it's, it's what townsend's been building so i'm pretty happy to see that um and yeah despite all the injuries it's not it's not one where you look at the squad and write them off because i look at that and uh yeah i'm pretty pumped to see how some of these guys can go 2018 they finished third in the six nations with a record of three wins and two losses the teams they lost to were wales uh, and ireland this year the bookies have got them as, as the fourth uh, favorite team to go on and do something in the comp the schedule is Italy at home like I said it's that first game where they may test things up it's a little bit dangerous to do it first thing up because you do not want that banana skin of Italy to to get like that's a must win game so yeah you, you don't want that to be a banana skin hopefully uh, if everything goes according to plan even if they do shift things up they should still get a result uh, Ireland at home is going to be a big, big test. You'd have to imagine it's all the big guns coming out for that one. France away, not going to be easy. I mean, none of the games are easy, but uh, Wales at home and then England away. So in terms of the schedule, it's not actually that bad. At least you get Ireland at home and Wales at home. Do have to travel to Twickenham in that last round, which could be pretty hairy. But um, And yeah, the trip to France, who knows what you're going to get. So yeah, um, like I said, Bookies got them as fourth favorite. Part of that's to do with, um, I suppose, the number of punters in some of the other countries. Perhaps a few more people betting. So it's not a, uh, a definite prediction, but it's just what the numbers say. Um, can they hold their form at home is definitely a big question with Scotland. Because at home, very, very difficult team to play. And carry the, can they carry some of that form from home away, which is, which is definitely an area to improve. France away, England away. Neither of those is going to be easy, like I said. But, um, yeah, can they deal with the injuries? I think they can, looking at the squad. Uh, it's a good chance to build depth, so I'm pretty happy with that, despite the injuries. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You miss some of these guys out, but the, the secondary guys or the other guys, the wider squad guys, get some experience. Uh, interestingly, it's 20 Glasgow guys, 13 from Edinburgh, 7 who are based in England, and 2 are based in France. So, yeah, it's, it's a it's a good mix of, of Glasgow and Edinburgh, who at least from what I've seen in the Champions Cup, both of them being in good form. So hopefully, see some of that form carry over from the Champions Cup, from those guys, anyway, uh, into Scotland form in the Six Nations. But yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on the squad. Other guys who you are um, aware of that are not going to be playing, I didn't mention them all. Um, guys to look out for. Because, um, yeah, some of these guys with no caps, I'm perhaps a little less fam familiar with than I should be. But, yeah, you guys let me know how, how you think Scotland's going to go. And I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.